Hello, hello, how are you doing? Happy Saturday. How is everyone doing today? Hello. Hello, Kemi, how are you? How's your day going? That's great. Hello, PM. How are you doing? Hello. How are you doing? How is your day going? We thank God. That's great. How's the family? Everyone's doing well. Good. Hello, PN. Hello, Kemi. Thank you, PN. <laughs> PN always likes me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, PN. So good afternoon and welcome to Esther's Preparation Room Women's Network Instagram Live Series. My name is Delacro and it's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to come on here every Saturday and um, hear this inspiring stories, right? EPN Women's Network is a platform where today's professional, uh, professional Christian woman can access the tools and resources that she needs to deploy her gift, her talents in the marketplace, right? Our purpose is to build up and empower women to achieve the best in their personal lives. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, to achieve their best in their personal and professional lives. The network is one of the four global platforms empowered by Esther Preparation Room and primarily exists in three markets, the United States of America, the United Kingdom, and in Nigeria. Today's guest is Tosin Amatayo Benson. Before I talk about this awesome lady, this awesome pastor, um, I want to definitely talk on what's going on in Nigeria. Um, that's our country of origin. That's mm -hmm. also well, most of us come from, although EPN Women's Network is an international platform, most of us are from Nigeria. And we want to let the people of Nigeria know that not only are they in our thoughts or, and in our prayers, but EPN Women's Network, or rather Esther's Preparation Room, as a platform itself, is an intercessory prayer ministry. And we constantly pray for Nigeria and all the nations all over the world. And we actually dedicate time every Saturday at 7 a.m. Eastern time, Eastern Standard Time to pray for also persecuted churches. So kindly join us in prayers for Nigeria. Um, we commiserate with the families of the of the victims, and we pray that God will heal them. God will heal the land. God is definitely not done with Nigeria yet, and greater things are going to be birthed out of this nation and out of this crisis. So I just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> um, Tosia Motaya Benson is a certified counselor. <laughs> mm. So we're going to talk more about that. She is a co-pastor of Ward Focus Chapel, located in Laurel, Maryland. She also the Chief of Operating Officer of Bolta Solutions, Inc., an enterprise that houses a number of businesses in the areas of information technology, training, software, and database contracting in the public and private sectors, real estate, and entertainment industry. So this is an accomplished job. You need to tell us how she does it. <laughs> She's also the initiator of Solid Values, an initiative that educates children in developing solid and moral values and etiquette. She's happily married with three children. Today's Great. conversation will be centered around gratitude thriving through changes. Welcome, Tosi, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I hope you can hear me. I I can hear you very well. Very, thank very you well. so, so much to the team. Thank you so much for Pastor Nike. Thank you so much. I don't take this opportunity for granted. So I wanted to appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And it's a pleasure to have you. So um, I know this is the bio that we give everyone just to talk about. Just tell us about yourself. <laughs> oh, Lord, I am a passionate person. So my friends will say I am strong yet I am emotional. So that combination together. And I think the reason why I try to put on this bravado face is because I know I'm emotional, so I try to show people that whatever, Joe, it's not going to get me, you know, so I try to show them that I'm so tough, but I'm, I'm mush on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's good. Well, that's, what, that's a good thing for me to know, now that I know you're emotional. <laughs> 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 but 
but isn't it funny that women are all, always considered the you know, the where the emotional ones, right? But right. when he said man and woman, right? He gave us different kinds of himself. Yes. So the men took a different dimension of God, and we women took the loving, the kind, the compassionate. God is emotional, though. Yes, he sure is emotional. So that's why he gave that to most women. I won't say all women, but most women. And you know, there are some men that are very emotional. <laughs> True, not to stereotype. Right. <laughs> the men that are definitely in tune with their emotions learned over the years, you know, to channel it towards the right um place. So it's okay to be emotional. <laughs> so, what does gratitude mean to you? And could you please define the term gratitude based on your personal understanding and experiences? Okay. In my experience, if I use that to define what gratitude means to me, just like we, a lot of us understand that worship is not what you do in church, okay? Like raising your hands and praising God maybe two hours a week and all of that. It's a lifestyle. So for me, through my experiences, Gratitude is like a lifestyle. It's not something I just say, thank you. God does something for me, and then I say, thank you. That's not what it is about. It's my constant going through life, making sure that my actions reveal and reflect the, a true attitude of gratitude, that whatever is thrown my way, whatever challenges I may face, I am grateful regardless of that, and my actions will speak. Uh, you know, towards that. So that's my definition of what gratitude means to me. So regardless of what is thrown your way, regardless of the challenges, the storms, gratitude is a posture that yes. you intentionally decided. It's a state of mind that you intentionally decided that this is the outlook, this is the posture I'm going to take and that's how I'm going to look. Exactly. How have you been able to the attitude of gratitude in spite of the challenges of life. I know it's an outlook that you have and it's an intentional journey, like you said. Share with us some of the insights that propels that action. Okay. When I was younger, of course, for me to get to this level of maintaining, uh, maintaining uh, you know, this lifestyle or this posture, like you mentioned, it, my younger years, I was, like I said, I'm emotional. So when storms hit, you know, you sway here or there, however it goes and all of that. But over the years, getting closer with my relationship to God, I have realized that either way, God is going to be God, okay? God is going to be God. It's not going to change. So for me to get things faster or get things done, I have decided that I will stay in this place because it makes things work for me faster. I've been through many storms in life which I'll share later, but maintaining this attitude for me is, uh, you know, has to do with the, you know, as I grew older and I began to understand my relationship with God, that he's going to be God regardless. So it's up to you to decide because throwing a fit or complaining or arguing is so easy to do, but to maintain this lifestyle is what matured people need to do, a place where you need to get to. For God to say, okay, are you done with your whining? Are you really done? Are you okay? You kicked your feet, you threw your track. Okay, can we talk now? You know, so it's a place whereby I had to get to. So to maintain it had to do with increasing my maturity in God. And of course, the only way to increase that is to get to your to walk closer with God through the word, through praying, through seeking his face. So those were things I needed to do to get to this place where I am. So one of the things that helped you was praying, seeking God more, developing, basically maturing your relationship with God, right? It's a yes. it's a work. So obviously when you're drawing closer to God, he throws some challenges your way to test yes. you. To test you to make sure, okay, are you really are you sure you're really grateful? Yes. What would you say has been one of the most finding um tests? that he threw your way right the devil uses it to tempt us but god uses it to test us test our character what would you say has been one of the most defining experiences that you've gone through 
<laughs> Nothing tops losing a child. Um, she was 32 days. Came back from the hospital. Everything was fine. She checked off everything. And having to wake up one morning and find that she was no, no longer breathing. That's, I think, by far. I've been through storms, but that by far would forever be cemented in my brain as one of the greatest storms I've ever faced in my life. Ha you know, having, the, the, I think the toughest day was the next day when my boobs went, sorry, I hope no man is here, but I mean, I, I want men to be here, but you know, um, when my boob was engorged and I had no child to relieve me. So I had to deal with that. You know, it's still fresh in my mind. Um, so, of course, in every storm, being emotional, you have to cry. You have to shout. You have to scream. I went through variations of emotions. I won't lie to anyone. Um, it was a tough test. It was a challenging test. Uh, you know, went through, you know, so much and everything. But one thing was this. I had determined, uh, of course, getting closer to God, because like I said, I went through variations of emotions. I blamed myself. I, you know, I begged God for mercy. I was angry, all kinds of things. But when I dusted my feet at a point, I realized that I needed to praise myself out of the storm I was in. Losing a child will be forever, okay? But having to bear it day by day was something I needed to do and to come out of that. And having to praise God despite what I was going through, it needed to, God needed to know that I am happy and I'm grateful for what I have surrounding me. Because despite, if you, the one thing about God is this. He knows you're going to face a storm as a child of God, okay? But he begins to work before that. If I never had a firstborn, God wouldn't have been able to use that to comfort me properly the way he did with my first child. Because before my second child passed away, my, mm -hmm. my firstborn was there. So oh. I could see through my firstborn how God was comforting me. And I began to praise God for that first child. And I began to praise God for the husband he gave me. Because I, up until that time, the child died in 2004. I had been married since 2000. My husband never shed a tear since we ever been together. That was the first time my husband shed a tear. But the way my husband bounced back, because of his level of faith in God and his, his knowledge of God, I relied on his faith to be able to praise ourselves through that. I am standing here today. We're talking about 16 years ago. I'm standing here today, two kids after that episode, only because of praising myself through the storm, only because of giving God the praise for how he surrounded me. I looked to my left, to my right, everywhere I could look, and I saw how God had cushioned me. Mm -hmm. And I had no other choice but to appreciate God. I had no other choice but to thank God. Despite the pain, despite the hurt, I had no choice but to appreciate him because it could have been worse. Wow, wow. Um, we thank God for your life. We thank God for the life of your family. We thank God for how far you have come. 16 years later, you're here. You're still standing. You didn't lose your faith. That must have been a traumatic experience. <laughs> um, I have a little story, but it doesn't, it doesn't trump what you just... <laughs> it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, and it takes, it's like you said, you know, God had given you different testimonies, right? So that when you experience what you experience, you, God had cushioned you. He had surrounded you. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, after you have suffered the, the God of all grace, he will settle you, keep you, he will establish you. Um, wow. Now you, you, you left me speak. <laughs> I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Okay, I don't really have stuff to say. I, don't, I always <laughs> no. I didn't. I didn't prepare for this one. Um, <laughs> personal, personal testimony. I have twins, and I had. Well, prior to giving birth to them, um, I was told my that my I should abort my daughter, that she had a growth discordance, and that I should abort her. And I was like, I mean, I waited for these children, and I prayed for. <laughs> seeds for them 
And that was just a devastating news to hear. But I kept praying, right? And after I gave birth to them, I now started having dreams that they were going to die, that I was going to leave. And the Holy Spirit gave me a song. And it was um, Champions. Champions by Ty Tribet and Israel Hutton. Right. And one of the lines of the song says, it doesn't matter, we win always. We win always. And I could remember listening to that song for Jesus weeks. I didn't. Even, I could. I didn't tell anybody that this was the dream I was having. Remember, my children were in the NICU. I couldn't tell my husband I was home, and that was what I was battling with. But I said, "No, God, whatever gift you give, you give it is good and it is perfect, right? You're not going to just children just for the enemy to take it." Two two weeks after my son was released from the NICU with me at home. I was just persuading him and the holy spirit said look at him hmm. when i looked at him he had turned blue <laughs> i couldn't even pray all i remember was in tongues that's all i could do and i screamed i screamed i kept calling my mother in law she's like he's fine I'm like no he's not fine he's not fine and my daughter was there my daughter was there crying my mother-in-law called 911. <laughs> and all they could hear was my daughter crying. But she, the 911 operator couldn't even hear what my mother was saying. Like, they are twins. They are twins. The wow. other two, I forgot what you call CPR. I didn't even remember CPR. All wow. I knew was speaking in tongues. And I said, oh, you cannot die. You must live. Yes. And the more I said that, then the Holy Spirit reminded me. I forgot CPR. Hmm. It was the Holy Spirit that performed the CPR. I don't remember performing the CPR and seeing him come back to life. Wow. That is forever memory. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't leave you. Those things don't leave you, to be honest. I am, I'm, I'm grateful for your beautiful face and how you are shining through your storm. Like, I mean, that was awesome. And every, every time I remember that, it's like, no, there's no storm that, that the enemy is going to throw at us. Mm -mm. God will not bring us up. Yes. So I am grateful for your life. I'm grateful for the three children that you have. Thank so, you. That God, you know, there's something about having a great support system. Yes. And so I'm sure he also felt the pain of oh. having a child and having to comfort. How, how was that season for him, your husband? And how were you both able to transition, even in your relationship? I'm sure that did something to your relationship um during that period it will shock you to tell you how much god had cushioned us a devastating blow but in two weeks two weeks we could actually note one time where we were both laughing two weeks in our deepest pain and we looked at ourselves and said this is god because we've seen movies or we've maybe heard of stories whereby the wife keeps blaming the husband or the husband can't get over it uh, on the wife. It's your fault. Is this fault? Is that fault? You know, and things like that. And then they separate because they just can't deal with the, uh, you know, the emotional, you know, things that come with that and all of that. But we thank God because he was the one I looked to when, you know, when you are, when you have been hit so bad and you you are lost for words. You don't even know what to say. I looked to him. I saw how he continued his, you know, fasting and his praying and everything he needed to do for God. And I looked to him and I said, you know what? I kept reminding myself, Tosin, you're not here for yourself. You're here for a greater purpose. So yes, it hurts. Yes, it's painful. You're not the first. You won't be the last. You know, you don't wish this on anyone. But basically, there's a reason why. And you just have to appreciate God for what, you know, like I said, he has surrounded you with. I thank God because it did not affect our relationship. We, it's not like we split, um, we, you know, there was a time where we were apart and then we had to go for counseling. No, none of that. We have always been. God has always, we, we. We, stre we encourage each other at night when, the, you know, the, 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 everyone has le everyone left 
and the, it seemed as if one one of the hardest thing for me was how it looked as if the world moved on after two weeks after she died. Mm -hmm. That was the hardest thing for me. My daughter is gone, and the world is moving on. And I realized that's what happens to other people, and the world moves on. So it happens, Tosin. Just learn how to bear with every passing day and still maintaining this attitude of gratitude regardless because that is what, like I'll say later, that, um, that is what I have used in every storm that I have been faced with. That was how I've, I, what I have used, of course, according with more other things, to get out, to be able to swim back to the surface, no matter how deep I went down, to be, you know, thank you, God, it's okay, praising him regardless, you know, just you'll get back up and you feel the air over you, you know, you feel the breeze, you'll be able to take a breath again. I know it looks as if your heart just left you, but calm down. Everything will be fine. So that that's what God has always used for me. Wow, God is faithful. So now he gives you a reference point. Yes. Now there's I mean, like you said, there's nothing trumps that, right? But now you have something like God brought me out of this. What is this one that God cannot bring? <laughs> exactly. Great. So the feeling of being anxious, the feeling of fear, the feeling of shame, the feeling of confusion. You, any, the root cause can be many things. How do you deal with the root of these and move on to a state of gratitude? I know you said that, you know, if God has, God has given you this point, but that feeling of anxiousness, you know, it stems from a root cause, right? Yes. How able to move past like deal with the root cause right and then move into a state of gratitude because there are some people that are dealing with different kind of things they're dealing with shame they're dealing with guilt with confusion and they, they're not even sure how they don't even they don't even know how to start thanking god <laughs> okay so let me even share this um during that time i felt a lot of shame i felt a lot of shame that i did I did not know how to take care of a child. Hmm. But like I said, God used my first daughter to say, you do know how to take care of a child. I felt a lot of shame when I went back to church. I did not want to touch anyone's child. I said, I don't want anything to happen to anyone's child and then I'll be blamed for it. I can't believe I'm sharing this openly. <laughs> you know, so many things go through your mind. So many things go through your mind. I did not want to touch anybody's child. So I'll greet them from afar and I'll walk on my merry way and all of that. The very first child that someone forced into my hands was Pastor Nike. When <laughs> Bemiga was born, she literally forced Bemiga into my hands. And I had to carry Bemiga for, I think it was during her naming. And I had to carry Bemiga. And I was like, what is she doing? You know, what is she doing? Why, why did she do, you know, once the, it just was confusing to me because at that point I was still dealing with my own, Lord. like you said, feeling the shame and feeling insecure and feeling all these things. And it was actually when, and I thank God she did that. I really do. I, till today, it's still fresh in my mind. And also another thing that even when I got ready because for a while, people will come and pray. You know how people want to console you and all of that? And they will tell you, oh, you have a baby in nine months. Oh, you know, they'll be praying. And, you know, as, as a cultured girl, I could not say my, I could not be like, can you just stop praying those prayers? I'm not in the mood to have another child, blah, 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 and those things. But I will, you know, as a cultured child, I will keep quiet, let them pray their prayer and let them leave. Even my husband was ready at a point and all of that. And I said, I wasn't ready at all to have another child. I didn't even think I was going to have another child. To be honest with you, my mind was locked. Let me just serve God and do what I came on earth to do and all of that. And it was this same Pastor Nike again that came. That I don't know. She, I need to run away from her. It was this same Pastor Nike that came. <laughs> and basically said, why not? You know, she basically encouraged me out of my situation. So for people feeling shame, you know, for people feeling shame or feeling down or all those things, 
I would suggest you surround yourself with people that are like-minded than you, that will not sit in wallow pity with you. And not that they won't want to comfort you or all of that, but you need people to encourage you out of whatever you are feeling. The shame, the hurt, whatever it may be, you need people. You need people. God is about relationships. So it's not every time that you say, okay, you found a word in the Bible. Or it's not every time you say God spoke to you. There are people that you surround yourself with that would help you get out of whatever it may be. That would say, no, you are a good mother. No, you, 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 uh, you are a good business owner. Let's say you, you had a failing business or whatever. Don't let this define you. This is not, this is something that happened to you, but this is not who you are. Ah, wow. You understand what I'm saying? So have people that will surround you that will help you pray, prayer partners that will pray. She prayed with me and all of that. And that gave me the courage to wanting to try again. Of course, the fear still didn't leave. Even, let, let, let me explain something. In all of this of maintaining our attitude of gratitude, the fear doesn't leave. It doesn't leave. I will tell you that. There are still things I'm fearful for. There are still things I'm confused about. But to calm, to quiet the noise of the fear is why I praise. Amen. Is why I stay in the attitude of gratitude. To encourage myself so that the, 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 the voices of fear, the voices of shame, all those voices, they get silenced. When I'm focused on praising God, I make that louder than all those noise. So that's what happened. I had to make the praise and the gratitude and everything louder by living every day, by having the posture of praise so that the fear knows that spirit, you are not coming to me. I understand how you operate, but I will not let you take over. I will not be fearful. Nothing... Am I am I afraid that oh my child is about to go to college, you know, with COVID or with you know pedophiles or things like that? Those things come to your mind, but you cannot stay in that place. You mm -hmm. can't because it's crippling. It's crippling. It can cripple. I've seen people being crippled by fear. Mm -hmm. I refuse to let fear cripple me. And that's the reason why I would always stay in the place of gratitude. That is why I will swim my way back up to the surface of the ocean and say, God, I'm out of this because of you. So that's the way I deal with it. Thank you. So listen, listen I'm seeing the comments and I, can't, I don't even want to digress. <laughs> <laughs> questions for Pastor Tosi. Please put them in the question box. Put them in the, in the comment section. Any questions you have for her, please drop your comments. Um, I mean, you said gratitude to quiet the noise of the fear. That's so for the youth in Nigeria, mm. for the parents that have lost children, mm. for the youth that have seen dead bodies, alleged dead bodies, like the government is claiming. Right. For the trauma, for the devastation that is going on in Nigeria right now, currently. Right. What word of gratitude or what message about gratitude do you have for them? My heart goes out to every single parent that's lost a child, um, you know, and lost anyone that has passed away, a loved one, through what just happened. I literally just broke down crying knowing fully well how much I love where I, I'm from, how much I am in solidarity with everyone that is trying to fight for change and doing what they're doing. It's tough to tell a grieving parent right now, oh, just praise God through the storm, because I know what I did not want to hear when I was going through my stuff. But in our grief, like the Bible explains, we have to grieve with one that has hope. It's tough, but as children of God, that's what we have to do. We have to grieve like we have hope. There is hope for tomorrow. Are we going to miss the person that's lost? Oh my God. I don't think you will ever stop missing the person. I don't think the I don't think the anyone can ever replace the person that's lost and all of that. 
But in our grief, we have to grieve with hope. We have to grieve that there's something that God is intending for this. As difficult and as tough as it to hear, but that's just what the reality of the matter is. There is hope, regardless of what you're going through. And my heart goes out to you because it, it looks as if your, your heart, it looks as if your heart just walked out of your body. And you're wondering where your heart is because you, it's like your breath, you, you can't breathe because somebody is gone. But there is hope. I don't know what the hope is, but as long as God is alive, there is hope. And I'm just saying, stay hopeful, stay encouraged. And again, our condolences to everyone that has lost a life. Thank you so much for that. Yes, in the scripture that came to my mind uh, is, though the tree be cut down at the scent of water, oh God, it will bud. I know people, people have made very comments about Nigeria, about the government, about the situation. And you said something, grieve with someone that has hope. Surround yourself, like Pastor Tosin has said, with the right people, with the right support system. When you cannot pray, have your support system cover you and pray for you. Listen to gospel music, listen to, listen to praise and worship, listen to songs about the mighty hands and the mighty works of God and how he has delivered people, how he delivered the Israelites when their enemy was literally upon them, how he delivered David, how he delivered um, Esther. I mean, there's so many track record of God delivering so many people. And like you said, you know, look into the past, right? And see the track record in the tapestry of God in your life. Yeah. So we have a question here. And it says, this is from PN. It says, what are some things you should not say to a person grieving? What are some things you should not say <laughs> to a person grieving? Do you guys have all night? Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> the number one thing I feel you should never say is, I understand where you're coming from. Even if you have lost a child, or you have lost the same thing that the person just lost. It is not the same. It is not the same. Me losing my child when she was 32 is different from a mother losing her child when the child is 42 years old. You cannot understand. You cannot understand. So that's the number one. Don't say you understand. And another thing is this. When the person, when you call to extend condolence, and you're talking to the person, don't start talking about your situation that it overshadows the person's situation because the person would end up saying sorry to you versus you Come consoling on. them. If they, you, your, you know, your time, maybe yours happened in the past and they had the time to, you know, share condolences with you. But when you're talking to the person at that point, you're calling for the person, don't spend the time talking about your situation. S sometimes being silent is good enough. The person just wants to talk. You don't need to be the wise one in the situation. You don't need to talk all the time. You don't need to say, oh yeah, and like budget this, and like budget that. There'll be the time. You can call the person multiple times, but be silent and listen to what the person is saying prayer is good to pray but don't say eh, don't worry da, 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 da. Don't. and another thing is you'll get over it don't ever say that <laughs> you'll get over it no one ever gets over the death of any child or any loved one you don't you just learn to bear every day to deal with it. So when you think about it, you smile. There were times whereby I stopped the car in the middle of the highway and broke down. Those are things, you know. There was one time my first daughter said, bye-bye, Ibukun, in, as I was driving in the car, and I had to stop the car. You know, there are different things. You don't know what someone is going through. Mm -hmm. Just be there. 
help the person out with whatever it is that you want to help the person out. But be careful what you say. I would say that. Think twice before you speak. The people that I enjoyed the most during that period were people that came to the house and sat and were watching movies with me and laughing their heads off. Those were the people that I enjoyed the most. I appreciated everyone, but I'm telling you the ones I enjoyed the most were the ones that came to make me smile mm. and just wanted to make me happy. Wow. That's, wow. Those were the ones I, pref I personally preferred. Other people could prefer different things, but that, that was what I preferred. Wow. Thank you so much for being honest and being open and just sharing. You know, these are conversations that you never really get a chance to, to hear someone speak to you about unless you're very close to them, right? And you're able to experience that with them. But thank you so much for sharing with us on EPR, things to say, things not to do, and really how to get over. So, how do you show gratitude when you're experiencing a really, really difficult time? Like, how do you show it? How do you, how show, do you show it? Yeah, how, how? <laughs> First, um, to show it would be to watch what you say because your words are powerful, okay? Oh, I'm, de oh, you know, people are, oh, I'm dead, I'm dead. Ha, ah, this is the end of my life. Be careful what you say. Yes, it hurts. Yes, you're in pain. But be careful what you say. I'm not saying don't express how you feel towards God. Because when I get to my own closet, I know what I say to my God. And I keep telling him, you need to help my unbelief at this moment because I don't believe in anything. I don't understand what to do. But what I'm saying is that be careful how you speak. Be careful how you let your mind wander. And when you see your mind wandering to suicidal tendencies or different things or whatever... As a child of God, you need to begin to guard yourselves and find a trusted person to tell so that they can stand in the place whereby they can hold your hand. So when you're going through a, a stormy time, don't say things to dig yourself down deeper into the hole. You say things that will get you out, to climb out of that deep hole you're in. Begin to say, I see myself getting out. I see myself coming out. I see this. I see that. God is only a matter of time. You need to begin to prophesy, to pro to speak positively, to prophesy over your life that, nah, this is nothing to God. Uh -uh. Do you see what God has done to this person? Don't you? you begin to use your past. You begin to use, the to stand on the Bible, to begin to get yourself out of that situation. So you need to always make sure that your communication, your attitude does not sink to a low level when you are do when you're going through a storm. You have to make sure of that. You need to check yourself. One thing I wanted to um, say is that there are a number of things that I don't know if you about you know maybe you ask me this question later, but I wanted to say that there are a number of things that maintaining gratitude does for me. The first thing is it, it puts my it puts my mind, like I said, my mind and my attitude in check. Okay? It begins to put it in check. Where it wants to wander, it draws it back. Okay, Tosin, bring it back. I got it. You got your mood. You got your okay, how could this da, 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 da. It, it's time to reel it back. Another thing it, it teaches my children how to handle things. When if let's say it's a family storm, you know, because we faced a family storm last year. I cried in my closet, but I did not want to cry in front of them mm. because I needed to, I needed to teach them. And I'm not saying, you know, don't be vulnerable or don't be transparent. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm trying to say is this, you need to be able to arm them with tools on how to deal with storms. You don't want them to be the type that just throw all caution to the wind and just like, eh, I don't think it'll ever happen again. Blah, 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 da, 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 da. You need to learn how to, you know, be strong for your kids to make sure that they are saying that this is how mommy handled it. And I think I'm going to go this route as opposed to feeling that they failed the test or they failed an exam. And then, oh, I'm not smart. I'm stupid. I'm dumb. Other people are doing well. No, we can't begin to snowball out of control with those words, with the way our mind works, you know? So that's why it is, it is very, very good to make sure that gratitude gets you out of 
where your mind could wander. Wow. Thank you. Pay attention to your words. Pay attention to your thoughts. Pay attention to your emotions. Pay attention to your actions. You know. Thank you. We have another question. And it's... Um, okay. It says, COVID has... COVID has brought sickness, pain, depression, death. How can we experience Thanksgiving season? <laughs> I'm so glad for that question. Um, during this period, um, COVID, I lost my brother in April. <laughs> I've been through some storms. I lost my, um, the one right, uh, you know, older than me. I'm right, I'm right, I'm next to him. I lost my brother, and we're very close knit family. For those that know us, very close. That was a big hit in our lives, and all of that. And with everything that COVID has brought, the uh, Black Lives Movement, so many people dying, and all of that, I realized that my mental health was very important to me in this day and age. And for my mental health, I stayed away from a lot of things. I stayed away from, you know, unnecessary discussions of arguments, you know, because this is a political year and, you know, a lot of people are getting into arguments of why do you think this or why do you support that or why do you stand for that? You know, do you believe in the Black Lives Movement? You know, things like that. I tried my, I, I'm, I'm trying my, tried my best and I'm also trying my best to stay away from those things and try to focus on what I think would help me maintain my sin <laughs> or my sanity in this situation because like I was telling a, a couple of people I said I've not been able to process a lot of death, uh, deaths you know I, we all know Chadwick Boseman died you know we all connected with him through Panther you know and so many things that we've been hit with you know people did shed tears for him and all of that for me try your best when you see that, you know, in COVID, you're feeling some type of way about it. Try to find a way to connect with God. Try to find a way to increase your time, your personal time, where you are studying the word of God, where you are praying more, where you are just, like you said, singing songs. Like, I, you know, I started taking walks and I, I would just play music to just first of all saturate my heart to just let that be a place of you know i don't pick up my phone for anyone i just when i'm taking the walks i just want to hear my my thoughts flowing you would not believe during a lot of these walks god has been revealing a lot my child is going to she's applying to college and so many things on how to you know, answer some questions or what path to take and everything for her. God, I, on my walks, God will give me those insights and then I'll come and share. And I'm like, I just thank you, God. I just thank you because sometimes you get anxious. You're like, okay, you want to help your child and, well, you know, has she done this or done that and everything? And God will just give you, drop something in my heart and that will just settle that situation for my daughter. So I've been able to take walks. I've been able to just listen to when God is speaking, when the Holy Spirit, and I just begin to just praise him and just thank him. So in this COVID season, try not to get yourself entangled with things that are not necessary. Try not to get entangled with things that are not needful, that you don't need to bother yourself with. And if this hasn't taught us anything, it's taught us to get closer to God. We don't know what the next month is going to bring as we are fully aware did we ever think that there will be the shootings at the leggy toll gate did we ever think that the you know the what is going on right now they're burning things down did we ever think that will happen never did we but what i'm saying is this and i'm not saying don't be knowledgeable about what's going on but when you see that too much of it is affecting your inner man it's time to get God in there more. It's time to bring God in more. His word, listening to him, play music, keep yourself in a focused place. That's what has been working for me. Thank you so much. And I'm so sorry to hear about the loss of your 
brother. I pray that God will comfort you, comfort your family, and that you come out on the other hand, thanking God, filled with gratitude for a life well lived. And thank God for the grace for you guys, for your family to actually experience them. Um, I'm sure it's a challenging time, but God will see you through. He'll carry you through in Jesus' name. Now, basically what I'm hearing you say is contribute in the best way you can, where necessary, right? Intentionally, consistently, and persistently guard your thoughts, guard your mind, take care of you right and also spend time with god spend time with family you see this family thing i'm thanking god for covid i know people have different reasons of covid some people have complained but i think like it has centered us covid has made us is making us think if we're not thinking before it's making us think what is really important like you said what is the needful thing what is the most important thing so thank you, thank you, thank you. I could go on and on and on and on with them. Having <laughs> this conversation. So tell us about your business. I don't want, I don't, yeah. Let us hear about your business. I know we have a few minutes left, but tell us about your business. Um, you were one of EPR's uh, speak, past conference speakers. Tell us about your experience and why people, not just people, intentional people, why they should attend EPR's first virtual conference tell us about your business your speaker at epr tell us about your experience and why people need to attend epr's first virtual conference okay um a quick one on the business we started uh where we are we provide information technology services to private sectors government sectors we also have a training school where we train people to become Oracle certified uh, DBA professionals, um, basically. And then we ventured out into other things. We ventured out into real estate. We ventured out into entertainment industry. So we have those that, you know, we're running uh, different things. Um, we just want to make sure that we leave legacies for our kids. And God has been helping us and inspiring us to do such. We have more in the works and we just trust God that you know all of that will work you know very well so that we can leave great legacies for our kids um in terms of epr i told pastor nike that she i don't even think she understands what god placed in her hands um when she started to just you know pray with a group of ladies and seeing how it has grown and see how God has created so many arms, um, reaching out, becoming global. Um, I really thank God for how that she, despite because she has her fears too. She has her concerns. But one thing about the grace of God over her life is that she listens. And I thank God for how she doesn't let her fear stand in the way of what God is telling her to do. Now, why should people attend EPR? As women, we are wired to serve our husbands if we're married, to serve our children if we have children, to serve our churches, to serve our ministries, or to serve others, basically. That's the way we are wired. So we come second, third, fourth in our lives most of the time. By the time, you know, we get to ourselves, we have nothing left, we are spent and tired. Why should you attend EPR? Because this is a program that puts women first. And I'm not saying men are not invited, men are invited. But this is a ministry that puts women first, that centers around empowering women on all sides, spiritually, financially, emotionally, or every angle. Attending EPR means you are now paying attention to yourself. For me, that's the way I see it. In this age where mental health is very important, it is necessary for you to attend EPR because it focuses also on your mental health. You need to be seen to be able to help others. If you don't take care of yourself, how would you be able to take care of others? 
is the same thing of putting the seat, the mask in the plane, putting it on your face first before you help others. Attend EPR because you're putting yourself first. Women, we need to do that. We need to love ourselves. Come and attend the program. How much is the money? How much is it that you need to invest? It's nothing compared to the to the invaluable wealth of information and the access to so many speakers that God has blessed you know, this world with that will be able to impact something in your life whereby you will be able to grow from it, to learn from it. Look at the pitch that um, the team has come up with. That is a fantastic way of empowering women financially. Now, we're not saying that you get so empowered financially that you don't connect with your husband and you're like, yeah, I got my own money now. That's not what we're saying. <laughs> we're saying that it will only better enhance the family for those that are married and, you know, together your husband will be able to be like, oh, look at my wife, you go girl, you know, things like that. So please, please, I beg of you, attend the EPR. The money is nothing. Invite people, come, let women, let us, stand together and you know all be very proud of ourselves you know most of the time we will you know people watch real housewives of atlanta all these real housewives and these women most of the time are cutting themselves down epr is building up amen that's what we do in epr come and get built up please attend the program and that's what i have to say <laughs> Listen, I'm not even, I'm not going to top that. I'm not going to try to top that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Save the day. EPS first virtual conference. The theme is Illuminate November 20th to 21st. Emergence2020.eprglobal.com to register. Again, Emergence2020.eprglobal.com to register. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Tosi, it's been a wonderful conversation. Yeah, you're not going to go back and behind the scenes and we'll finish our conversation. <laughs> back here another time. Um, thank you so much. Oh, Ola Shadi is saying last week, oh, this is the last week to get the tickets for just $35. Yep, that's it. This is the last week. So, And before we leave, I just wanted to say something. Um, you, One of the things you had asked me was what distinguishes a great, uh, you know, a grateful person from an ungrateful person. There are too many things, but immaturity comes to mind in terms of, for me, when you when you keep, God does things for you and then you're still staying in this place of ungratefulness. That's, that's very immature. It's time for us to become very mature in this walk with God. God can communicate with you better. He can trust you more and he can bless you richly. Amen. When you stay in a place of constant gratitude to God, remember, it was the only person that God made whole was the guy that came back, the leper. I think the story of the leper. The rest got their healing, but that means that the disease could reoccur again. But the only one that came back to give thanks was the person that got his wholeness. That means that the disease can never come back. Make sure in your quest for increasing knowledge, in your quest for getting closer to God, you mature and you stay in the place of gratitude. It gets the door unlocked faster than you can think. It's worked for me. It's worked for many others that have discovered that uh, thing. So please, I implore you, don't get down to complaining or grumbling. Stay in the place of gratitude because if you look around, like my husband is always saying, there are a hundred people that would take your place in a heartbeat. Mm. A hundred people. For that same thing you are complaining about, there are a hundred people that would take your place. Gratitude is a weapon. Please use it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And on that note, thank you so much for joining us and spending your Saturday with us. We appreciate it. It's been a wonderful time connecting with you uh pastor tosi thank you so much please follow us on all our social media handles youtube instagram telegram facebook estes preparation room and see you next week at 12 p.m for inspiring conversations thank you have a wonderful saturday thank you so much Aqua. thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you have a great day you too